Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community. I'm Lori, and with me today is Mary Kate. Mary Kate's going to talk to us today a little bit about improvisational piecing, Pam Rocco style. Pam Rocco style, indeed. And Pam um, is, um, she's been writing a regular column for us, her Words to Quilt by column, for a couple of years now, three, four years. And um, she's always talking about her process. It's very informed by improvisational piecing. She's really influenced by the quilters of G's Bend, for instance, or Gwen Marston, people like that. And in every, every uh, column, she writes about a particular process or a particular inspiration. And today we want to talk about her idea of a thumbnail sketch quilt. Right. Yes. Um, this is a column that's in our October-November 2015 issue. And she talks about the value of thumbnail sketches, making something smaller as a test for something larger. And as you, you talk a lot about, like if you're making a traditional block, make one block first. Right. <laughs> before you make all of them, before you cut all your patches. Right. So this is her version. And we chose to pattern out of the four um, quilts that she um, submitted along, along with this column, we chose to pattern Greek key. And she was surprised by that. She thought we were going to go for something a little simpler. <laughs> That's interesting that she thought this was complicated. It is because where do you find that fine line between cut these exact strips, this exact size, or, and, I don't know, look at the picture and make the quilt. Right. You know, which is what we want to say sometimes with these more <laughs> improvisational ones. So we worked on finding a way to pattern it, but to be quite honest, you don't need a pattern. Correct. I'm going to put us out of a job if I talk about that too much. <laughs> you do not need a pattern to make this quilt. Um, it's a basic um, log cabin style, but really courthouse steps pattern. And you saw my sketches right. from when I patterned it. And I kept, I kept getting um, uh, sucked in by the different values and the different fabrics, trying to figure out how did she put it together. Um, and it's, it's, it's a courthouse step. So if you look, you, she has these three patches here in the middle. Um, and then she adds these two side strips, one light and one dark. And then down here, we've got one dark and that goes from here to here. It's hard to see sometimes. And then the one light. You can see that more clearly because she used two different fabrics up here. And that's what she just kept doing. So one dark and one light, top and bottom. One light and one dark, side to side. Right. And you just keep building it out like that. Whereas a log cabin is, you basically can only add one strip at a side, uh, so one strip at a time. Right. So, so this goes a little bit more quickly. Um, in her column, she talked about how she wanted to keep the focus on the value, working with really light and really dark, as you can see, solid fabrics. She has a couple of little touches, this little corner down here, um, just pieced in. And then she has up here, she has this little scallop we're not going to talk about those today. Yes. We're just going to talk about how to cut improvisationally to get these nice lines and how to piece them. So, so that's her quilt. Hand that to you. And so here's my first little step out here, my first little sample. As you can see, I stuck with her color palette right. and her values. Um, and I think, let's turn it like that. There we go. Um, I didn't cut two different squares for the middle, but I tried to get more of that, that effect of three. Right. Um, and just going around and going around and going around. This is even more of a thumbnail sketch. Smaller. <laughs> Much smaller, um, because even, I was even less sure that I wanted to stick with this. But this was a lot of fun. It goes really quickly. Um, and I tried cutting. It's hard. It's hard not to use a rotary ruler. Right. It's hard not to use the markings on our rotary mat when we're right. used to it. And in fact, I, I pretty much did cut all of my strips with my rotary ruler to cut straight strips. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to reduce the amount of bias I had going around on the outside okay. edges. I wanted to be able to control that a little bit more and just control what was going on on the inside okay. edges. But that's Makes just me. Sense. Um, if you get more comfortable with it, you can just cut wonky strips and join them. But I didn't take it quite that far yet. That'll right. probably be my, my next step. So I'll put this over to the side for now. Um, and then I thought, well, let's, I wanted to work with some pre-cut two and a half inch strips. 
And I had been influenced by some things I've seen of just really pale, low contrast, really soft things. And so again, this was a great opportunity to play with that color palette. No investment. And the thumbnail sketch idea. <laughs> the thumbnail idea. sketch idea, exactly. And um, with the pre-cut two and a half inch strips that did a lot of the work for me, um, I started out with this one. And I had added these two strips. I was working on it one evening. I will blame this on my husband because he was in the other room grousing at the computer for distracting me. I'm yes. sure it was all his fault. It must have been. But I realized after I added these two side strips that I had messed up the color placement. Right. This pink should have been down here and the ivory should have been up here. Right. At that point, I turned off my machine and I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and the next morning, I got up and I, I did this one. Um, and I'm much happier with it. And I'm still really intrigued by that it's just super soft color palette, so I'm, I'm glad I had this opportunity to experiment. Um, Pam is great about, you know, releasing you from the rules. So I thought, well, if her rule is light and dark, I'm going to break her rule. Showed you there, Pam, and I decided to go light and even lighter. So um, again, no rules. There's nothing. And really no subtle. Super subtle, super subtle. And then I thought I wanted to play with um, prints, because again, she used all solids. I wanted to see what would happen if I introduced some print into this, because not a lot of us have a lot of solids in our right. stash these days. Um, that might represent a small portion. A lot of us are drawn to prints and blenders, and what would that look like? So I still kept it fairly small scale. I used a blender, a uh, tone-on-tone -tone blender, and then I used this dot. Um, and I threw in the large scale dot in the center just as a focal point. And I like it. I do. I like it. Um, I found my eye kept getting drawn to the line created by the teal uh, tone on tone. Um, and so that's something I might play with. I still have a lot more of this fabric, so I might keep building this out. Yes. We have a couple of babies coming, not in my immediate family, but <laughs> in our extended family. And this might make a nice crib quilt. Oh, yeah. You know? So, still playing with it. So we can put this to the side. And let's actually talk about the cutting. As you can see, we turned our mat over. And that's, that's to... That's Pam's recommendation. To resist the temptation of the straight lines. Exactly. Exactly. It's hard. Very yeah. hard. But the rest of it was pretty fun. If you could hand me that strip there. Great. So, um... And as I said, I did cut my strips on straight of grain. Because I do, I don't know. It's part of my personality, I guess. Yes, exactly. Um, but I want it to be placed. Where do I want it to be placed? Over here. I want it placed along this side. Because I'm chasing it, chasing it around the quilt. Right. And um, what I would do, let's angle that one more time now that I know exactly where I'm going. Um, no rulers. Just laid it alongside. There's Just like that. Burns for you right yes, there. exactly. <laughs> um, and that was it. So I don't even worry about you know that these the edges line up. It, it really it's doesn't. It's not matter. exact. Not at all. Not at all. So here's the next step, and this is the part that's fun, maybe a little scary, um, but it's it's really it's it's cool. So. Actually, I, just, I, I learned that it's actually easier if I layer the pieced quilt top on top of my strip rather than putting the strip over okay. the quilt top. And I just overlap them according to you know, how much of, this, of the already pieced top I want to take away. Right. Um, and I, I experiment with a lot of things, just cutting on an angle, like from corner to corner. Mm -hmm. um, and then, or a more of a, maybe more of a curve, you know, this more sinuous lines or something. So let's talk about how to cut that curved line. Yes. First of all, this, I just busted this rotary cutter out of the packaging. <laughs> so I'm counting on the fact that this is a super sharp blade. Um, you really want that because you don't have the pressure of the rotary ruler of your acrylic okay. ruler there to hold things in place. So the less resistance that your blade, I guess the less resistance your blade is presenting to cutting the fabric, the better. So okay. you definitely want as sharp a blade as you can manage for this. And then you pick a spot, 
a little scary to do this on camera. Yes. But, and um, so I'm going to start kind of in the middle of the overlap. I've learned that if I, when I started over to the corner, that was maybe a little harder to sew. Okay. So um, maybe more of a little bit of a straight cut starting out. And then just taking my time. And rolling your wrist to get yep. the curve. And I see that you were going fairly straight at the other end, too. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I, a few times I, I made a real sharp cut, and it just it wasn't the best play, way to start out okay. when I'm trying to get my needle in the fabric and it's not bunching up and creating right. you know, bird's nests or something like that. So, so then I take away, look how, see, that, that really cut beautifully. You it know did. what that tells me? I need a new blade in my <laughs> cut, rotary cutter at home because it was not as easy as that. Um, and then these two pieces, as you can see, they just abut perfectly. And then you just sew them. And this is going to take a little bit longer than a straight seam. You know, just, it's fine. You just take as long with it as you need to. Let's come over here to the machine. I'm going to just line up my, my edges. And really, there's no science to this. It's just doing it. So and you're going to the, go slow. I'm going to go slow. Because slowly, you've yeah. got all these curves. Yeah, because then when I want to, let's take a look at what they look like when I place them right sides together. Those don't match up at all. That's right. You have to play with this. And it's not even like a drunkard's path block where it's just one long curve. I've got right. a lot going on in here. So all I'm worrying about is just lining it up here at the top. Take it over to my machine. Uh, you can worry about a real nice quarter inch seam allowance if you want to, but you don't have to. I mean, it's not going to make or break the quilt. You exactly. Know what I mean? You want to just for your own construction purposes, but it's not going to. It's not going to be a life or death situation. I should have you do this. <laughs> See, <ya. laughs> but we will just start stitching. Now I'm trying to keep my right hand out of the way, partly just because of the camera angle here, I'll just, just let our audience know, um, that we try to keep our hands out of the way for the camera. Um, at home, I was much more right in, right. right underneath the needle. And basically, you're lining up the raw edges of both the top and the bottom yep. piece, just doing and letting posture. the curves happen as they will. Yeah, and so then when it, they start to get out of alignment, then I just kind of pull and tug, and I, I play with the bias that this is affording me, a little bit of stretch that happens. And, and you just keep going. So let's just sew down this whole line. It's just gonna take a second. And notice that, that what's going on over here with this top piece of fabric, it's not laying smooth like it would be if you were sewing a straight right. seam. It's and that's not even something I'm even able to see, right. you know, from where I'm sitting, because I'm just looking at where, I'm just looking at where, like, a half an inch in front of my presser right. foot at this point. Right. So. Do you have your stitch length the same stitch length as you ordinarily would? You do, don't you? Yeah. Although I have to admit, because I sew on a mechanical machine that still uses knobs for stitch length, I was sewing, I was sewing these samples, and I was like, what's going on? And I realized my, my three-year-old had increased it like to a four. Oh, so you were basting it together. <laughs> but I was like, eh. you know, even if it were the real quilt, not just a sample, I don't know that I'd worry too much. Oops. So let us, that might be enough for us to see how well that's going to press out, rather than taking it all the way to the end right now. I think so. So let me um, cut my cut the stitches, and then let's just lay this out here. And you can see already that it's actually going to press quite nicely. But if even though there's this press, curve, yeah. And even though I was not doing it under real circumstances here, where like a, you know, like I said, where I'd be much more underneath the needle and. Um, taking more of my time. But look at how nice and flat it is. Look at. So I think the, the, the key here is you want as large a cutting surface as you can manage, depending right. on how large you want to make this. Um, 
if you made this bed size or even the wall hanging size of Pam's quilt and right. key, I, I imagine to cut strips that long, um, I might pin the layers together before I started cutting so that I could move my, right. my pieces together and, and not lose my place. But you want as much uninterrupted time, but really just the key is just a really sharp blade, cut away from yourself, um, and just gently just rotate your wrist back and forth. That's all. You don't need to really move your arm, I guess, is right, the point. You right. don't really need to. It, need, it just can come right from your wrist, and you can get a nice... I just love that line. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's really fun. And then, you know, where it stops, nobody knows. It's, it's a technique I might use. I found a beautiful ombre fabric in our cutting room, and I was, in our sewing room, and I was um, at the last moment. So I didn't have time to make that sample. Right. But I think... I think I'm going to make one because I want to see what that might look to have a gradation of fabric going around. Yes. So now I've just set it on camera so now I have to do it. Exactly. And then I can blog about it. So exactly. it should be up on our blog, the Inside Quilters newsletter blog, by the time this is ready to be viewed right. online. So. Right. And that's that. I just have fun. Put your, put your rulers away and just start cutting your fabric. Well, thank you, Mary Kate. It's my pleasure. We are going to be talking more about Pam Rocco. Yep. This is part of her... a three part series. Yes. So, lots of fun things to learn. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.